Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. All right, guys, so we're back here in the hangar today with the 401. I had a couple choices of what we were gonna do today. Originally, I was thinking, hey, this is our airplane now. Let's get this thing shined up. Let's get all the bird stuff off of it. Let's get the interior pulled out and get it cleaned up. And then last night, I just couldn't sleep. And I just couldn't sleep because I kept thinking about, you know, what Sam was saying when we we're in the airplane starting it up. That's great. So now you own half an airplane. Ah, get out of here. <laughs> so, you know, after thinking about that, just had to get in here and get working on this engine. It's just really bugging me that, that we don't have this started yet. And honestly, that's what I, you know, I set out to do. I set out to have both these engines running. That was my goal. So let's dig in on this today and let's figure out what's wrong with it. I have some ideas and we'll see if we can get this thing started. All right, so this might sound a little crazy to some of you, but the other day um, I was here in the hangar working and this old timer aviation mechanic came up to me and he said, you know, back in the day when he served in the military, he worked on a, a ton of different military vehicles and stuff and they didn't always have like cans of penetrating oil and stuff like that. And he's like, just put some jet fuel in the engine. That kind of confused me because, you know, this engine runs off of 100 low lead aviation fuel, gasoline. But he said, no, he's like, the, you know, to unstick it, he's like, just pour that jet fuel right down inside the engine, move the prop around and let it sit for a while. And he's like, it'll thin everything out. And if there's anything in there that's kind of coked up or, uh, or varnished, he said, it'll, it'll loosen it up. So we're going to try that today. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but, but we're going to try it and see what happens. Make sure I don't get any of this stuff in my coffee. This stuff stinks. So we're gonna put as much of this jet fuel down inside the crankcase, down inside with the oil, um, as will fit. I'm not sure how much is gonna fit either, but we're gonna find out. So one of the things I've been thinking about is how slow this engine turned over in comparison to engine one on the left side of the airplane. And the thought I have is, you know, is the oil pump um, just all coked up with sticky old oil. The hopes are, you know, getting this jet fuel in that it thins out all the oil and it uh, works as a solvent, you know, inside the engine. And it's readily available here at the airport. All right, so we have a couple gallons of jet fuel. I, actually, I just I can't believe I just put jet fuel down in the crankcase of an engine. But anyway, um, we, we put it in there. It smells terrible, by the way. But so, so now we're gonna crank the engine over. Just try to kind of splash it around in there, get it moving. I'm just gonna crank it by hand and then we'll pull the oil filter off and I'm gonna get some down in that line too. So basically the idea is just to get that jet fuel and use it as a solvent, get it all throughout the engine, let it sit while we pull this mag apart and get the mag cleaned up and make sure it's timed right. I think I can turn this over faster than what the starter turned it over. <laughs> so hopefully, once we get this thing loosened up a bit, my hopes are it's gonna spin over faster, which is gonna create more electricity as, as far as the mag goes. The faster it spins, the more the magnetic field makes more energy, the hotter the spark. So could have been part of the problem is, is this not spinning over fast enough? It wasn't able to make the electricity it needed to make to start. All right. That's actually a really good workout. So we'll get this oil filter off. 
That'll give us a chance to see if there's any oil that was even up in the oil filter because if you look here the way the oil filter is is it's it's uh you know sitting up and down so it will drain back down in you know looking in the comments the other thing that i noticed is a few of you mentioned that these continentals have an issue with the oil pump losing prime the oil eventually ran out of it and unless it has oil in it, it's not gonna to continue to pull oil out of the pan. So that could also be the problem. So it could be a combination of them, but one way or the other, we're gonna make sure that this is primed. We're gonna make sure the whole engine's cleaned out inside and see if it makes a difference in the way this thing spins over. You can tell this hasn't been off for 17 or 18 years kind of curious to see how full this is if it'll show on the dipstick 12 quarts is down there so it's up to here so I'd say we got about 18 quarts of fluid in there so what's the chances this has any oil in the filter this is going to tell a little bit of a story so zero oil it's not all corroded which is good at some point here i am going to replace that filter all right so let me get a funnel we're going to get some of that jet fuel down in down in there as well all right that'll work perfect Can you look down here and see if when I rotate this prop backwards, if the, uh, the pump does suck this jet fuel down in it, that'll be a good way to see if the pump is working. Oh yeah, it sucked it down. It's definitely sucking it down, so that's good. So that means the pump you know, is taking that fluid and pulling it down in, which is a good sign. Ooh. We're gonna make a big mess. <laughs> All right, so I would say that's full. Glad I have those absorption mats here. Got plenty of that in the crankcase. We got some directly down in the oil pump. If you could look right here, you can see the fluid in the top of the um, I believe that's the output side. As I'm spinning it over, if you can just tell me if this sinks or comes out. Nice. Know what that means? Pressure. So we just got oil pressure at least coming up into the filter area uh, through the feed lines. And I'm, I'm exhausted. That prop's kind of hard to turn over. I mean, we're turning over some massive pistons. Or I'm just out of shape. It might be both. I'm not as young as I used to be. So I'm going to put this filter back on. I'm going to hook some power up to it. And we're going to turn over with the starter. Because A, I'm too exhausted to turn over by hand anymore. And B, I think it'll turn over faster than what I can turn it over. And I'd like just to pump this all through the engine. So it still has lubrication, uh, you know, being that it's, it's mixed with the oil in it actually mixes really well it's like a you know like I said it's, it's it acts kind of like as a, a solvent so we'll get this back on all right so let's hook the hook the battery up and we'll just we'll turn it over so I've actually heard some folks sent me a message and they said every time that I say penetrating oil or penetrant or something like that, they've made a drinking game out of it. So they've watched all the, all the videos we have with our friends. And just for you guys, I think I just said it now four or five more times. So you're welcome. And in light of that, I'm going to use two cans and we're really going to get these cylinders lubed up, you know, because I'm a little worried that uh, they haven't had much lubricant with this penetrating oil. So we're gonna get plenty of it in the cylinders just to make sure that as we're turning this over, it's not dragging the rings dry on the cylinder walls. 
going to be real excited also to do a compression test on this one and compare it to the one that did start and to also you know check the fuel pressure because we know what the other one got when it started and what it took to start it you know regardless of what you know is in the in the books and whatnot so it'll be interesting to do that and compare the two all right so let's go and grab the batteries and i'll hook the batteries up all right so we got some voltage let's get inside here and crank those engines over into this gorgeously clean airplane of ours i really did want to clean this up today and i'm sure one or two of you might want to see the cleanup of this in fact you know what if you guys really want to see the cleanup of this you know post something in the comments i saw a couple people commenting on it but and also let me know like you know, what do you want to see the most? The the outside, the inside? I mean, I I just, I have a feeling that these things are going to come out really clean, believe it or not. Although that is completely and utterly disgusting. I have put an ozonator in here um, early on to kill any of the bacteria or anything like that that would be in here. And it helped with the smell a lot. All right, so I don't need any of this stuff on here's the oil oil pressure for the red engine if you look here it looks like it may be a little broken but you know we'll keep the mags off turn the power on if this gauge even works my hopes are that this oil pressure comes up especially that it's so thin like that it should really pump clear prop see if that fuel flow gauge is going to come up too while we're in here. Hey look we have fuel pressure oil pressure. Look we even have we have even more. Okay so obviously that gauge is broken. However, we did see the oil coming up out of the pump, uh, out of the filter area that would have been coming up into the oil filter. So we're gonna let all of that sit in there and hopefully, you know, clean everything up in there, just kind of slowly clean it up while we go over the, uh, the mags. So I did get a few messages as well from folks that said these, these old light speed headsets were you know really valuable back in the day these are a little a little worn out there's two of them i mean one's a, a 33g and the other one is a 15 xlc hey if any of you guys want these you want to restore them or if you can restore them or if you're brave enough to restore them you know you're uh, you're welcome to have them just uh you know put a post in the comments that you want them and you know, and or, uh, you know, just, just reach out even uh, in the description. I have uh, a, a link to get a hold of me or an email to get a hold of me. Shoot me an email. Let me know. I'd love to see if someone can fix these things. They're, they're pretty disgusting. All right. So I know we have some oil pressure at this point, you know, coming back up through the filter. Um, I know the oil pressure gauge is broken. I could get an oil pressure tester and hook it up to one of the oil pressure lines uh, out here. I think it, in a bit here, I'll probably pull this loose and see if we have any oil coming through that turbo uh, feed line. Actually, let's, let's pull this off and just see if we do have any oil coming out of there. At this point, we didn't have any oil coming out of there, and that's, you know, early on what kind of made me curious. Oh, look at that. There we go, guys. So we have oil the turbo, you know, so one of the reasons I'm laughing is because the camera is going crazy today. It doesn't want to cooperate. But the other reason I'm laughing is we got freaking oil here. We haven't had oil here in this engine. The other one did. That tells me we have oil flow. I'm not going to say whether or not that's pressure and how much it is, but I believe that guy's um, suggestion of putting freaking jet fuel in here is working. I mean, because it thinned it out. It mixed with it really well. It stinks really bad. It smells a little bit like diesel. So the next thing we're going to do, let's get the spark plugs cleaned up um, because I did rob the spark plugs out of this one. 
and stuck it in uh, engine one. If you remember on the video how disgusting they were, I mean, they were like the most terrible thing ever. So I did soak them in the parts washer here, but I still got to get like all the carbon out of it as well. So let's get this oil line back on. We'll get the plugs cleaned up. We're gonna pull this mag apart. We're gonna make sure that the timing marks line up. I'm just gonna pull this one apart because it's the one that is needed to start it. This one is a secondary mag. This is the one that has the shower of sparks. The other engine started without this right mag working. So I'm assuming this one will start too because it does have leads going to either cylinder. This left one, I believe the leads go to the top of the cylinder and on the right cylinders, it goes on the bottom. So let's get this hooked back up. Get some penetrating fluid on here so I can actually spin the nut. One of the comments too is that you know, this penetrating fluid company, I'm not going to say the name, should sponsor the channel. I think they should too, just because I'm going to go broke buying this stuff, you know, or hey, if there's any other company out there that wants to be on our channel, we use all kinds of, of penetrating fluids. So, and I've had tons of suggestions in the, uh, in the comments of who we should use. If you're watching this and you work for one of those companies, give me a shout. You know, our contact information is in the description. I have this feeling that the oil pump wasn't getting prime. And because the oil pump wasn't getting prime, it wasn't getting lubrication in the cylinders, it wasn't getting lubrication anywhere, which in retrospect, I, you know, I wish I would have thought of that because you know, that means the bearings and, and whatnot weren't getting as much lubrication as it should have. It still would have had some from some splashing and, and from just the oil level, like the cam in these Continentals sit really low. So the cam I'm not worried about at all, but the crank bearings and stuff I am. However, for this thing to fly again, there's a ton of work we're gonna have to do. It's just not getting this engine running. We are gonna have to pull the engine. We are gonna have to split it. We are gonna have to, you know, do a complete overhaul. The last thing we want is this being up over, you know, some city and then having emergency landing or something like that. That's the last thing we wanna do. So we are gonna check it over, but we do wanna get it running. We, we wanna finish the task. So that's hooked up. All right, so if I remember correctly, inside this hole, we're gonna see part of the timing gear. So inside the hole here, we have one of the gears for the rotor inside of the mag. So I'm gonna spin the prop over and I think there'll be, there's a red or a black mark that'll be right in the middle of this window at some point. Ah, right there, that red mark, that is time. Now it needs to be timed for number one cylinder to be at top dead center. And I'm going to check top dead center the most fancy way ever. I have this really cool tool. I'm gonna to take a screwdriver and I'm gonna stick it in here and just make sure like I can look in the cylinder here. If you come over here and take a look, you can see right inside there. I mean, these, these pistons are so huge. I mean, you can't miss it. So right there's the piston. I already know it's a top dead center, but real simple. I mean, you can use a, a gauge for this, but if I put the screwdriver in here and I keep some pressure on there it's going to give me top dead center so right right there's top dead center so we're top dead center on cylinder number one so then if i if i come back 25 degrees right there's the time of mark so i'm going to check the other side make sure something didn't happen along the way that i don't know about maybe they're not in time yeah but now we know that main mag is in time and if you look inside there this one is as well so they are both in fact the right timing as far as, you know, naked eye. Now, obviously I put a degree wheel, you know, on the front prop. There's also some marks to line up uh, in the front of the engine, but I know it's top dead center and I know these are lined up, so we're good. We did previously pop this cap off. We looked in there, the points are good. We popped this cap off, the points are good. I didn't check the, the leads, the P leads, to see if it was grounding the mags out, like if there was a short somewhere in the wire or somewhere in the switch inside the airplane. I didn't, didn't check that. It's something that I can check really quickly. If I pop this cap off, my guess is that there's going to be a little corrosion in the pickup and the rotors. It's just like a car or truck. It's got a rotor that passes by a contact that has a charge to it and it transfers the charge as it passes by per cylinder and that's how it fires. So a lot of times in an old car or truck, if you've seen any of the other videos that I've done in the dump truck video, I checked it and it was actually pretty clean, but there was a little bit of corrosion, the contacts. Pretty simple, scrape the corrosion off. It's gonna make contact. Is it gonna be perfect if it's, if it's corroded and scraped off? No, but will it start? Normally it will. I don't know what's going to happen when I pull this apart. 
So previously we did pull this off as well, the harness, and everything looked good in here. That is the condenser, which is replaceable, which does go bad. Usually it's gonna go bad because this wire is gonna be corroded or the, this is gonna be corroded, or it can be internally bad as well. That looks like in great shape. I can test it, but folks have actually told me too that they've tested them and they've still been bad or they still fail pretty quick, but we're just trying to get it started. Obviously, you know, at some point these need, you know, complete overhauls in, in both mags, so. Internal timing is this mark here. External timing is the mark that's inside here. So as long as you have those correct and your, your point gap is set correctly, uh, you should be good to go. So if you guys get a chance, give the video a pause, get down in the comments. Is this ever going to run again? Or have I just, have I ruined the whole engine? Or is it going to explode? All right, let's pop this baby out. So, there's our mag. I want to get everything marked as far as where everything is so I uh, don't have to try to remember that. Really curious to see how this looks on the inside. I feel like I'm kind of taking a bomb apart right now. <laughs> like I don't want to move something the wrong way. All right, so here's our coil. It's got a little something on it, but not bad. Here is the brush right here on the other side of this is going to be the cap. There's our, I don't know what that red mark is. Oh, that's our, the timing mark we were seeing. This is why it is important to service these. Yes, it would spark, but if you look at like the the bearings and stuff, I mean, they're, it's pretty much just dried out grease. There's barely any in there. So before something like this would be flown, and that's that's why you gotta like fully overhaul these and, and fully rebuild them. But looking down in there, I mean, the, the magnet in here is, there's no corrosion in here. So I feel good about that. There was really nothing on where the coil connects. You know, that's a little mark there, but it's, it's nothing bad. This is a brush that goes through the gear that makes contact to the coil. That's not bad. These points look pretty good. There's a tiny little bit of something on. We'll get those cleaned up. That is where the voltage jumps across the arc. And this is where it, it contacts, just like you'd have in a car or truck. I mean, it's, it's no different. All right, that looks pretty clean. So if you look in here at the rotor, uh, not the rotor, but this would be more like the cap that would be uh, again on your car or truck. It, Definitely has a good amount of corrosion. Pretty happy with the way these are cleaned up. So they're not 100% perfect. Again, I would replace these normally.
this has to be here. All right, so I know there's a tool to time all of this internally so you don't have to try to have six hands. I think I got it perfect there. Yep. All right, so we're good. It's a pretty cool sound. It's a tiny little bit of build up on these points. I kind of feel like a dentist right now, scraping a tooth. So if any of you need any fillings done, let me know. I'm not a dentist, but I think we could figure it out. <sighs> All right, I feel pretty confident that is in a lot better shape than it was. And we got our timing marks are correct internal and external so if we get it on the engine now in the same position we should be good to go and get the gasket All right, so the only thing we got to do now is, as we lock this down, is make sure that our, our marks lined up, which we already have it lined up. Now, to get them in time correctly, there's a spark box. Is it a spark box? Is it a... Ah, spark box. See, I have my own names for stuff a lot of times. Uh, so it's not a spark box. <laughs> it is a, a dual magneto synchronizer. So, you know, inductor magneto timing light. I like spark box a lot better. So yeah, so normally you would hook this up to both P-leads and you would turn the prop. You would see that these are both synchronized perfectly. We're just trying to start it. So, and this one doesn't even work. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one firing. And then, you know, in a, in a future episode when we're overhauling the whole engine, when we're getting everything 1000% correct, we'll use one of these. Not going anywhere. So everything's attached. Everything looks to be timed right. One step closer to getting this engine running. So many of you have shared the different ideas of things you would do if you had this airplane and you were a pilot and could fly wherever, you know, wherever you wanted to go. But one of the things I've been thinking of is what do you want to see us do with this airplane? You know, I think right away, what could we do to help people? Um, you know, there is angel flights, you know, they help uh, ill people get to hospital appointments across the country. There's Paul's rescue, which I'm going to talk about a good bit in a future video, because that is how I got one of my dogs. And that dog is the most amazing dog ever. She was flown here from a different part of the country and I adopt her here. So there's also uh, some different veterans nonprofits that we could get involved in. When I say, you know, this airplane is ours, I truly mean it. This airplane is ours. I wouldn't be doing this, uh, you know, without you guys. The support, the excitement, you know, when you guys come in the comments and, and I can feel your excitement, I read so many of the comments. In fact, some people might say I spend too much time reading the comments just because I, I love that you guys are part of the community that is Rebuild Rescue. And that's what this is. This is a community. It's not just a channel. It's just not videos. It's a community. The community is you guys. I'm just a little like a small part of it. So we're going to have a, a fly in at some point in the summer. And I think this is the first time I mentioned it. Buckle up, boys. We're going to have the 401 here. We're going to have stubby here we're going to have the dump truck here we're going to have the jeep here we're going to also have the next project here that you guys don't know about yet i appreciate you know when you guys uh invest in the channel with your time i also appreciate you know when you guys do buy some shirts you know go to the merch store buy some hats it supports the 401 project it supports some really really cool projects and the idea of this channel at the end of the day is to give back and it's always going to be to give back. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like the videos, share the videos with friends of yours. We're going to be giving back to you guys as the viewers. And that is, uh, I, I just, I can't express that enough that how important that is. And, 
how important I hope it is for you guys. I feel like I'm threading a needle. So I'm going to get these plugs back in here. All right. So that magneto is cleaned up. It's timed correctly enough. The only thing we would have to do now is see how well of a spark it creates. So see how well it sparks. So we did clean these up in the parts washer, but man, there is just a ton of carbon stuck down in these plugs. It's almost like I could have soaked them for a, a year. All right, so we'll get these up against the head to ground them out. Because you do need a good ground, although this one does also ground through the wire as well. A lot of folks don't realize that, that this is a ground on the outside as well. But we'll get it against the head for good measure also. All right, so we have six spark plugs hooked on. So we're gonna kill the lights. We're gonna make the mag hot and probably do a little prayer that, uh, that these things spark really good. So we'll get all that jet, jet fuel. <laughs> it's, it's really weird saying we'll get all that jet fuel out of the inside of the engine. But uh, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna drain the jet fuel out, you know, and then we will, how does this work? It's gotta go lower. Hmm. I thought I was being all fancy with our tools, but this isn't gonna work. So let me grab, let me grab something else. something to prop this up so it's not going all over the place. Ooh, thought we had most of that out of there. I think I'm actually starting to get pretty excited about the cleanup slash detailing video of this airplane because I can't wait till I'm done working in bird poop. One thing on an airplane you get used to real quick is safety wire because almost everything is safety wired. Obviously you don't want a drain plug coming out of a, an engine at 10,000 feet. It's usually a, a bad look. Not to mention people have oil on their cars would not be too happy. Or their houses. assuming this is going to get all over me but at least it should be a little bit less So we did put a couple gallons of jet fuel in there. So this is going to fill this. It looks like maybe it's a two gallon. 
waste container. So it's going to get real messy here. I do have a plan. Get some new gloves on. They're so funny. We are brilliant. Genius. Can't change oil. Yeah, it's about time for a full hanger makeover. This will help. Oops. So, note to self, whenever you're draining oil, waste oil into a waste oil container, make sure nobody else previously halfway filled this waste oil container or you're going to have waste oil all over the place. Looks like we just had a little bit more, just enough to cause the huge mess. clean this up a little bit later. We'll let these uh, absorption mats do their job. All right, so we got all of that old stuff out of here. Got these mags, or mag firing, and that thing has awesome spark. Get this, some of this breather tube hooked back down. We'll get some oil in here, 12 quarts of oil, and we'll get the plugs in. And then what, what are we gonna do after that? Oh, we should probably check compression. After that, we'll check fuel pressure. And then we're going outside. We're gonna see if we can't finally get engine number two fired up, making smoke, see if the prop works, and that would be awesome. Yeah, this is just has been eating at me so much. I mean, I, I can't explain to you how much it eats at me. So I'll be really happy once this thing is, uh, once this thing's burning, burning fuel. Some thick oil. Like some of the thickest oil I've ever poured in. Yes, didn't smell a drop. We did much better putting oil in than we did taking oil out. Usually it's the other way around. So that's 10 quarts. Um, that's fine for what we're doing, I believe. You know, according to dipstick, you know, it's a 12 quart dipstick, but I believe these will run off of even like four quarts. So I've heard, not that I'm ever gonna find out. So I'm confident we're good there. So let's do the compression test next, because that's the one I'm most curious about. I'm gonna see what kind of uh, compression this has. Maybe that's one of the reasons it wasn't uh, firing up. All right, so we'll 
start back here. Cylinder two, and we'll work our way around. Clear. She's spitting some oil out too. That's interesting. All right, one more cylinder to check. As I check these cylinders, I find myself trying to go faster and faster because I'm getting more excited. So I can actually get some sleep at night. Clear. All right, so we have compression on all the cylinders. I know at least one or two or a few of you have put in the comments. One of our shirts, you know, says that you need spark, fuel, and air to start an engine. You do need compression, you do need timing, you need ignition timing, you need cam timing. But you know, I do agree with that. And we may change the shirt and add compression and I may go through the comments and see who might have mentioned that and they might get reached out to to get a free shirt all right i got our handy dandy specialized aviation fuel pressure tester limited edition oh. so we are gonna have to get these engines overhauled to make this legal to fly so if any of you work at an engine overhaul shop or you know somebody who owns one or works at one send them a link to this video you know let them know we're looking for a shop to work with because you know, we're gonna have to get these overhauled so we'd love to come to your shop and to you know to overhaul these things with you all right we got the fuel pressure tester hooked up I'm gonna go inside we're gonna pop the fuel pump on see what kind of pressure we got Nothing. Well, that's not good. I am officially a dum dum. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh, this is what happens when I get excited about doing something. There's my Schrader valve tool. So, in my haste, there's a Schrader valve in here that forgot to take out so there's no way it can test the pressure because the pressure can't get in so now let's get inside the engine actually let's not get inside the engine and be really cramped in there let's get inside the cockpit let's turn that pressure pump on let's see how much pressure we get any pressure wonder how much I'm gonna have to spray on here to actually get this cleaned up. <laughs> hey Sam, what's going on, brother? You're gonna clean up the airplane with that little spray bottle? Well, anything left in there? We're, we're at least gonna clean up the huge mess I made by trying to fit six gallons of oil jet fuel mixed out of the engine into a five gallon container that I think had about two gallons in it that somebody put in there, so. 
So you're a mechanic, but math is really isn't your strong point. No, math is not. And you've, you, you've flown with me now, so you understand that already. Yes. But the, the headings, you know, three, two, zero, two. Yeah, hey, as long as you're within 10 degrees, I'm good. So that's, that's, that's the way I fly. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you stopped by. We're gonna get this thing fired up. We got the mags all cleaned out. We have fuel, we have compression. Now it's, it's, the compression's not that good. I mean, I think they're right around 60 to 90. I think two or three of them are 60, might be a little lower. So, so this engine here, it's not as good. It could just be a little corrosion on the valve. So we might run it and that might come up. But you know, the, the other day when you were here and we fired, we fired this up, you had mentioned, you know, hey, now you have half the plane. So I thought to myself last yeah, night. I brought a chainsaw. I, I, I'm just gonna going to split it right down the middle. This way, you know, which well, way are we going? I figure it's better to have it together, so I better get this one running. No, and I, I knew you'd want to want to hear this thing run. I want to hear it run. Like, I can't tell you how many hours we have into this side of the airplane versus that side, you know, just figuring stuff out and kind of learning along the way as well. Oh, and everybody's correcting you. This is the number two engine. Oh, I know. Well, I was calling it the right engine. Uh, was no, I no, called the number one? Number, that was the number two engine. This is the number two. Okay, so it I'm calling, right. I was calling this the number one because it's you the start. number one pain in my ass. Is what I'm thinking. So, so if you have some time, do you want to help us pull these, these airplanes out? Yeah, no problem. We'll pull the 401 out and you'll get to see, I, I think it's going to, the idea is, you know, I, I, I'd like to see you fly in it again. I really would. I don't know how we're gonna afford to restore it. Pretty much, you could fill this thing up with money and that might be enough. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I figure it's, it's probably gonna be in the $300,000 range. That'd be to restore it. To get it flying, I think, could probably get it safely flying for like close to 200, but it wouldn't be restored. This airplane did a lot of angel flight missions. It did a lot of humanitarian work. After Katrina, this airplane went down the Baton Rouge, they were out of amoxicillin. This airplane, we filled it up with amoxicillin from someplace in Virginia. I took it down there. There wasn't a spare spot. In wow. This well, and that's a, earlier, it's funny, earlier today, you know, we were talking about how it'd be really cool to do some positive things with it, you know, some humanitarian, uh, some charity, some angel flights, some uh, Paul's rescue. Like, I know you have a dog. I know you love dogs. I absolutely love animals. Like. We both like dogs better than we do people. Well, this, that's probably <laughs> true. I know there's a ton of viewers that love animals. I'll bet you there's a few viewers out there who have either been on an angel flight or have a friend or a family member that's been on an angel flight, you know? This one was perfect for angel flights because of the stair entry. Yeah. Um, you know, people were able to get in there. Think about crawling up on the Bonanza. It makes it that, tough. That makes it tough on the name mm -hmm. of the person, whereas the stair entry, so much easier for them. You know, and that's one of the things I've been thinking about. You know, there's a ton of the viewers that they're pilots, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of viewers that are, are, are high time pilots that were professional pilots that maybe don't have an airplane like this that they could, of their own, that they could yeah. use, but they would love to donate their time. Right. Um, and that's why, you know, really been considering, you know, doing something extra special and really restoring this airplane so it can be used for that. So viewers from all over the world, as long as they're certified, you know, and, and trained in to fly this, would take it and would fly it wherever to do those missions. It's going to take a lot more than what I'm able to put into it financially. I know that, you know, so we've been reaching out to different companies that would like to get involved with it, that would like to donate either some time or some money. We've even talked about doing like a GoFundMe or something like that. You know, there's so many people that watch the videos that are invested in the videos that would love to see some really cool things happen with us and go on those adventures, you know, with us. So, you know, someone said to me today, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not sure how to afford to restore the whole thing, you know? And they said, well, you know, you have like 380,000 subscribers right now. $1 from 380,000 people would rebuild this thing 100%. And someone else mentioned, actually emailed me and said, hey, you know, the amount of certified APs that I know that would come and help with this would help get closer without maybe spending as much. So the whole like spirit of the, and community of the channel and of YouTube and everything else has been awesome. So you might actually get to fly this thing again if you would want to. Sure.
I guess, I guess with maybe a little bit more work, maybe with- I'm sure I want to be the test pilot. Well, hey, I'm sure we can find somebody. I think you'd be one of the best test pilots personally, because you probably, how many hours do you have in this thing? About 500. 500 hours. Wow. Yeah. I'm gonna stop stepping in the purple stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, because this really, is really, really slick. slick. It is really slick. So yeah, let's get um, let's get these airplanes out. Let's get this thing fired up. All right, Sam, so the last time I fired this engine up when you weren't here, so you didn't get like the, you yeah. know, the, the, the first fire up. So if you want, let's hop in and let's get engine number two fired up. Oh, a mouse just ran. Seriously? Seriously. All right, looks like we still have a mouse in the house, in the birdhouse, a mouse in the birdhouse. over here. Yes, sir. There's some fuel flow. All right, we got fuel flow. This thing likes the fuel too. Okay, ready? So I guess, what do we need here? I guess we need a little bit of a... That throttle right there is open. A little bit of a clear prop, huh? Yeah. So, Clear prop. Let's try a little bit more. Let me do something here. Go ahead. Just keep it priming. Mags on? Yeah. Oh, she's trying. Let me give her a little shot of go juice. I'll be right back. Right. Go ahead and open the throttle all the way. Let's try it again. Mags up. Mags up. Pressure. Clear prop. Just let this build up. It's not the strongest pump in the world. I ran the other one up to like 20 the first time we fired it up. You should get fuel in there. Right. Keep it cranking. All right, stop cranking. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to try something a little aggressive. Go ahead and crank it over. Well, maybe batteries are a little low. Let me go put a new battery on. See if that'll help any. Core prop. We definitely got fuel because it is coming out of the overflow, but it just seems like seems like it could be turning over faster yet. You know, I don't know if we had a different starter on here. Maybe the starter is a little weak. 
guess if I wanted to, I could really take the starter from that engine and I could put it over here. We know that one turns over and that would tell us if it was in fact the starter or if it's something internal and that's why it's turning over so slow. It wants to fire, you can hear it. So it looks like uh, starter wise, it looks like it's three bolts. It should take me 15 minutes to change. So I'm gonna go into my tools. I'm gonna take the starter off the left engine, see if it'll get this one to fire. Yeah, so this starter here, I noticed, this is a lot newer. looks a lot newer. So one of the things you got to worry about when you're working with twins is on some models, one of the engines is counter rotating compared to the other one. The way you can tell if it is counter rotating is to look at the prop and see which way the prop is pitched. You know, if they're pitched opposite, that engine actually rotates the opposite way. Putting uh, the wrong starter on can make some really bad things happen. So, but luckily these two are the same direction. We'll be fine. Let's hope this is, uh, why it's not starting. Hey, look at that. First try. So the nice thing about about trying this is we're going to get to see whether or not this starter was the the missing you know key to this you know is the engine going to turn over just as slow with the starter that in the other engine turned over really fast all right so that should do it the engine should turn over just as fast engine two should turn over just as fast as engine one did. We got a fresh battery. We have engine one's starter. I get them mixed up on engine two. So let's see what happens. Throw back, props. Clear prop. Come on, baby. I think it liked that. It did. That's a flooded start. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. It's not trying. Yeah, so it's not the starter. The only other thing I could think of is, is you know, is the uh, exhaust system stopped up like was on the Jeep? And that's the only other thing I think of. Um, the other thing to check is the shower of sparks circuitry um, can check that and it's weird that this engine just does uh, turn slower than the other one i thought for sure it was because the oil pump wasn't working One of the things I did want to point out, where we start the 401, uh, pretty much where we test fire anything we do here, uh, we do right in this position because there's a 300 pound fire extinguisher that is 20 feet from us. So we do have, you know, proper fire suppressant, uh, you know, just in case, you know, something does happen and it is important to, you know, to be safe. Wonder if maybe there's not something wrong with the fuel distribution up top there. So at this point, we're back to a fuel issue because it's not a starter issue. It's not a it's not an ignition issue because that's it seemed to have plenty of of spark, especially after cleaning out that mag. But 
this with as much fuel and prime that we've been given this, the inside of these cylinders should be completely flooded out. Like it's it's coming out the overflow underneath the engine, you know, like it should with these Continentals when you want to fire them up, these big bore Continentals. But but the cylinders are dry. So um, we changed that a little bit manually here. So we will see. So we did get some fuel in directly in the cylinders. If it tries to fire now, at that point, I feel like we know that it has an issue from the fuel distribution block because it did have 12 PSI of fuel pressure when we tested it. So it should be getting down into the injectors, but it's not. Hey, Sam, do you want to go ahead and open the throttle up all the way? Go ahead and keep that open. Mixture's okay. Um, and go ahead and do a, a, a mixture rich. Do like quarter throttle. Go full throttle. It's not even trying now, is it? It's almost like there's something dragging in here. Yeah, like it's like it, the cylinders have too much friction or something. What was that squeaking? It's almost like the piston going up and down in here. One of my thoughts is like take one accessory off and then turn it over, take another accessory off. Like, is it this or is it something that's just, maybe it's like this pump is locked up or maybe this pump is locked up. But I hear something, you know, I hear something inside there that sounds like it's dragging. Now, it sounds like it's back at the cylinder but without knowing a little more about what could be in there. It's, it's hard for me to tell. You know, obviously at this point to really be able to tell you would start, you know, uh, the whole accessory case in the back would come off. You would just check everything, but you would check everything anyway, because you know, it is an engine that's been sitting forever, but yeah, you can hear. It just, <laughs> it literally sounds like the piston moving up and down the bore. It's almost sounds like all of them are which is just so weird to me. Let's try the starter fluid and then, now I gotta throw the towel in. You know, does it have oil pressures? I'm kind of back to that again. When I put heavyweight oil, what I should have done is I should have put really lightweight oil in. 2050, yeah, it's as heavy as you can go, but that's what you run in an airplane engine. So that's what I put in. Maybe I should have put like zero weight, just some real thin stuff just to get it started. You know, the only other thing can be accessories at this point, but like I said, it's just, you hear the, you hear it dragging in there. And it's so much work to get these in and out. Like that stuff dissipates pretty darn quick until it hits compression, the other engine over there, like it's been so much freer. And then, like I said, that sound, like I'm, I'm really interested to take it up, like a part apart, take it off the airplane, put it on an engine stand, split it, like look at all the accessories. Well, I think we're gonna give it one final try. Uh, no, no prime, no anything, mixture rich, um, quarter throttle. It's not getting anything. Yeah, it's not gonna go. It's not gonna go. Are you still working on it? I'm going to throw the other starter back in the other engine. Yeah. Get this starter back on this side. So if I take something off of something, I have to put it back on. It's my general rule. 
That, that would be another sleepless night if I didn't, so. So call me simple, but I want to start something up. So I will see if this starts up. Let's see how fast this spins over with that starter swapped. Clear prop. So yesterday we spent hours on that right engine and we, we kind of got it to start, but it, it just wouldn't catch. It just wouldn't, it just wouldn't really run. So I left the hangar feeling so defeated and like so down on myself. You know, just really wanted to hear that run. I, I really wanted to get that part of the project behind us so we can move on. You know, as I was home, I started going through the comments that you guys leave and seeing all the let's, let's fly, seeing all the congratulations, seeing all the positivity. And it, it really lifted my spirits and I started thinking, here I am upset because I failed. I failed again to get that same engine to, you know, to, to run. And it started to lift my spirits in such a way that I thought about the day. I thought about Sam coming by unannounced. You know, here Sam is excited about this project. You know, he did angel flights. I didn't even, I didn't know this until yesterday. He did angel flights, liver transplants, heart transplants. You know, it just dawned on me that we had this amazing chance to do some amazing things. I woke up this morning excited about the future, excited about our airplane. And I know I've said this before, but all you subscribers, all you viewers, you're the reason that this build has become so exciting. So I'm really, really happy that you guys have come along and become part of the journey. That leaves us thinking about the next stage of this. You know, we're going to have to restore this airplane if we're gonna fly it. It is going to cost an enormous amount of money. In the comments, you know, some people have pointed that out. I think there's a number of people that think we're crazy, which we probably are. It's gonna take all of us to make this happen. It's gonna take a ton of work. We're gonna need some APs here to work, and I'm gonna invite you guys here to work with me on this project. We're gonna to need to raise funds. We're gonna to need to have a GoFundMe. We're gonna put the link right up above here. One dollar helps, you know, whatever you can give and help with this project. Anybody that donates, anybody that buys merch throughout this project, we're gonna get your name right up on this airplane. Your name's gonna be on this airplane for when we do an angel flight. We're gonna have different shows. This is gonna be at Oshkosh one day. It's gonna be at Fun and Sun one day. It's gonna be at your local airport one day. I wanna get this flying so I can invite you guys along so you can do the amazing things with us. I guess what I'm getting at is it's up to you. We need your help to make it happen. I, I, I surely can't do it myself. It's gonna take the whole community. Really excited about it. And I'm excited about what all of us doing a small part, how it can do things in a big way. And it's amazing. Thank you guys so much for coming along. Thank you guys for subscribing, for ringing the bell, turning on your notifications. Thank you guys for sharing this video. Get the word out. You know, we're doing some amazing things here at Rebuild Rescue. Thank you.